have been having such a great time on Len and Kathy. It's even greater knowing that you are there watching. Grab something to write with. There's lots of revelation that's been flowing from the Word of God and from the Word being applied in our lives and other lives that we know about and using those as uh, stories to learn about how to have victory over negative thoughts and negative thinking and what all negativity does uh, beginning in the thought life and how to, quote, nip it in the bud. I'm telling you, thoughts, and another word for thoughts would be self-talk, uh, thoughts and self-talk that will lead to success is what we want to concentrate on today, Kathy. And like the Apostle Paul said, think on these things. You know, he gave that whole list, whatsoever things are true and, and so on and so forth. And it makes such a difference in what we think on. We know a couple uh, in uh, another state who are pastors whose son lost his life. Tell our viewers about them and about concerning processing the grief on their son's passing. Well, they are such a great example because of casting down imaginations and refusing negative thoughts in, in the most difficult of situations. Uh, their, their teenage son took his own life because of drugs. And imagine trying to get over that. There may be somebody watching that is trying to get over something like that. And we asked them, oh, about I don't know, eight months to a year after it happened, we asked them, how are you getting over this? What is the key? Because they were going on with their church and helping so many other people. And they said, it's this simple. We help each other. When one of us starts to think grief-stricken thoughts and how could this happen and, and negative thoughts that are spiral spiraling us downward, the other one, we've made an agreement, says out loud, no, we're not going down that road. And that was their one phrase that was their victory phrase. Then when the other one would get down, then the other spouse would say, no, remember, we're not going down that road. And then the husband would say, yes, you're right, we're not. And they continued to say, we're not going down that road. So it's important, isn't it? Yeah, and they're still going today. They are. And they're going. They're going great. Matter of fact, I just have such respect for them, and it's it's one simple sentence allowed them to process and get over the hurt, the loss, and if one person can do it. Anybody can do it. And I'll tell you what to do if you live alone, because we're talking about a couple who helped each other. Maybe you have no one to help you in the immediate uh, problem, but you can call a friend, you can pray, you can worship, you can give, you can do a lot of things. But the immediate first responder thing, since I used to be a first responder, what I would do is put another, we're on the refrigerator thing again, <laughs> put another big note on the refrigerator, I am not going down that road. And then read it and out loud. stand in front of your refrigerator and read it out loud. If you have to scream it to the top of your lungs, to the top of your voice, I am not, underline not, put it in a different color or something. I am not going down that road. I'm just not. And then you just do something that takes your mind off of it. Call a friend, go out, go do something. But deal with it. Deal with it with words. Thoughts come from words from the outside being spoken sometimes. And thoughts have to be dealt with with words. Uh, so... Here's how you do it. One of the first things you do to overcome negative thoughts is to fill your heart and mind with God's Word so that there is no room for this low road junk uh, uh, of, of thinking negative things and viewing life in such a, uh, a negative, uh, defeated way. 
just don't leave any room for it. Have some worship music that you put on and, and uh, just crank it up and dance around you. You gotta be radical. You really cannot, you know, sit around in your easy chair with the blinds drawn and the shades or the curtains drawn and think, nobody knows the trouble I see. You know, those are all great old songs of, of turning it over to the Lord and that's great. But listen, just be radical. Be yes. radical. Well, yes. that's not my personality. Well, do you want to live with the same death thoughts and the same negativity? Okay, but I wouldn't uh, and I've learned not to. You go do something radical. You go to the mall and, and go window shopping. If you don't have any money at the moment, go do something. Take your mind off of it. Interrupt yourself. Uh, and, uh, but you start by saying out loud, I am not going down that road. Therefore, you take all the power away from that, that uh, the power of that thought to yes. take you down like a, a, a lead weight to the bottom of the ocean, you know. Well, Lynn, I don't see anywhere written in Scripture where the Lord tells us to do things, all of which help us right. and benefit us, where it says, unless it's not your personality. Oh. <laughs> I don't see what, that anywhere in what my a Bible. Cop out. I have heard that, I guess, for years and years and years. Well, I'm not a very demonstrative person. I, you know, I, I don't think I could sit or, or stand in front of the refrigerator and read that sign or just walk around my house screaming, I'm not going down that road or the equivalent and just talking out loud. Remember, words trump thoughts. Yes. And it's so important to fill your atmosphere with words that trump negative thoughts. Good worship music and your participation therein will trump these negative thoughts as well. And whatever you have to do to create a positive mental attitude and a positive spiritual atmosphere. Yes. I know uh, of a man, I haven't met him personally, but I, I knew of a man in a, a story I heard from a trusted friend of mine that, and it actually made, made the national news at one time. He was told he had a terminal disease and uh, he wasn't even that spiritual a guy at the time. He later became a believer because of what happened that I'm getting ready to tell you. He went home, he said, well, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna enjoy myself. He got all his favorite foods and uh, he, he happened to be of the age and uh, that thought that the Three Stooges were funny, which I think the Three Stooges are funny too. They're silly, but they're funny. And uh, he got all the Three Stooges and Marx Brothers and, and Laurel and Hardy and all these funny old uh, movies and sat at home for days and days and days and watched these until he laughed himself healed. And the man, it took about six weeks, and the man went back to the doctor and said, I don't understand it, but you don't have cancer anymore. And the only thing the man did was have fun, re just reject all of the negative uh, thing and begin to just treat himself to some funny, funny comedy things. And did you know that that laughter did him good like a medicine? Yes. It did him more good than any chemotherapy therapy could do, which they couldn't do. It was not uh, gonna respond to that, this kind of cancer. But anyway, he did that for, I think, six, eight weeks. And Kathy, he turned around, he got healed. Isn't that great? See, you can't erase negative thoughts with another negative thought. No, you can't. You have to erase a negative thought with a positive word or action. Uh, Every time you try to unthink, oh, please write this down and never forget this. Every time you try to unthink a negative thought, it has twins. Now you think about that for a minute. <laughs> it's a little bit humorous, but it is so true. Every time you try to unthink a negative thought, it has twins. So use music, use a word, use the word of God. Uh, it's uh, just a matter of replacing it with something positive and let the power go to the replacement, which is positive, and, and deny the power of the negative thought. And love and respect yourself enough to do that. Yes. Kathy, it is so important for people to uh, have self-love. Self-love 
better known in the psychiatry world and the psychology world as uh, self-worth uh, or uh, self-esteem is not the same thing as being self-centered. No. Self-love is, in a way, valuing your own personhood the way God values you in that he loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you <clears throat> had you been the only person on the face of the earth. See, that makes you special. So value yourself like the Father valued you when he sent Jesus and when he values you all the time now every day, sending the word, sending people to bless you and help you and, and, and uh, lift you up. Value yourself. Watch your level of self-love because when you, you're, and it's called ego strength, clinically, ego strength. Ego means what you think of yourself. Ego means if you think highly of yourself. And that is not necessarily a negative thing unless it goes over the red line into self-focus. So under the red line, it's meant to be very healthy. Ego strength, self-respect. Well, don't you have any self-respect doing that? You've heard that all your life. Well, respect yourself so much that you do something about the negative thoughts. Get an attitude, like the kids on the street say, get a tood, T-U-D-E. <laughs> get a tood about those negative things going on around you and get an attitude of wiping them out with something positive. And, uh, well, Lynn, I haven't met too many Christians that thought too much of themselves. Well, isn't that the truth? I don't know if I could name five. Most I have a list right here for you. <laughs> Just kidding. Most Christians don't think enough of themselves. That's true. Don't think highly enough of themselves because God thinks of us so highly. Sending dear Jesus to die and suffer for us that's how highly he thinks of us and he made us in his image. So we need to get a healthy, strong self image and we need to be bold as well because that's tied in with boldness. But Gloria Copeland um, is, has been a great example to me of coming out of a uh, very self-conscious position going into the bold woman of God that she is today. And so stay with us. We're going to take a break for a minute and tell you about a great offer. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you Gloria's story. From Len and Kathy's collection of praise and worship CDs comes TCT's Evangelism Bundle. Kathy, we have two wonderful praise and worship CDs, Let It Rain, that has some of the most wonderful worship and praise music you've ever heard. Holy and righteous is your name, Lord. You are the holy God. And what do you have? I've got Jump in the River. When you don't know what to do, just jump in the river of the Spirit. <laughs> Featuring a song on here, The Vision for the Harvest, that'll encourage you to win souls in the days we're living in. God's got people on His For your gift of $45 or more, receive TCT's Evangelism Bundle. Call 866-338-5033 to get this special offer. Now that music, that will give you such good thoughts, that worship music, and get your mind off yourself as you praise God, and then reach out to other people. The scripture says what you may happen, make happen. That means you decide and you go out to bless somebody. You put them above yourself. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Now, I want to tell you the story about Gloria Copeland, because we've talked about people using the excuse of their personality, maybe being shy or whatever, and not being bold enough to speak the word and come against negative thoughts. We, uh, of course, have worked with the Copelands for many, many years, and Len leading the worship. And everybody, including Gloria herself, uh, they always talked about in the early years of ministry how she just stood behind the pulpit and she wasn't very demonstrative. And Kenneth would tease her and say, it's like she's, she could stand in a wash tub because she never moves out <laughs> one way or the other. 
Well, one day at one of the Believers Conventions, Gloria, who, if she just lifted one hand this high to praise God, we knew she was stepping out because she was very shy. Uh -huh. And it would almost start a revival if she lifted one hand for those of us that knew her. So we were used to her being that way. She um, came in to her afternoon session to teach in a convention center. There were, I don't know, 8,000 people there or whatever. And she said, I want to say something before I start teaching. She said, I've always thought of myself as being more dignified and not demonstrative. And she said, I looked up in the dictionary what the word dignified means, and it gave me a shock. <laughs> it said it means self-focus. And when she read that, she said, that's it. Self-possessed. Self-possessed. Uh -huh. Self-possessed was the next meaning. She didn't want to be self-possessed. And so she gave up that excuse of not praising demonstrably because she was dignified. And she came in that afternoon and she said, uh, I have something uh, in my extended family that I'm praying about that I want to see the Lord do for me and take care of. And uh, there's problems, you know, in every family. She said, and the Lord spoke to me. And he said that if I would praise him, with my body, my legs, my arms, my mouth, unashamedly that he would bring the answer to that very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so she said, will you ever forget that, Lynn? I was, she, will never forget that because I was right there by her as we pulled that switch over. I introduced her and she, I was leaving. I was standing to the side to see if she needed me. And I remember a shoe went flying by me. <laughs> well, she it said, Lynn, shoe. strike up the musicians. Uh -huh. And she, well, you tell it. You were standing there in the audience. You saw it happen. Well, I was out in the audience. She said, so Len, band, put on some good praise music. Give us another song. And here I go. And they, you all started singing. It was a fast song. Yep. She, she started lifting both her arms sky high. She started moving her feet, kicking her legs, dancing a little bit. And she began to praise the Lord unashamedly. And she kicked her shoe off and it almost hit me. She kicked it was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but see, when you do something like that and you break out of your comfort zone and you quit thinking about yourself and you obey the Lord like we've been talking about here, marvelous things happen. Oh, yeah. Just marvelous things. And, and the key is being unaware of self as the focused entity and bullseye of the universe. You know, you're not. And yet, when it comes to John 3, 16, you are. But you are in God's eyes. So in your own eyes, just realize that self-focus leads eventually to the first cousin of death called self pity because when things don't happen right for you, it is uh, again the negative side of, of self-focus. And I, I heard somebody say one time and I wrote it down, it's changed my life and it really slapped me in, and I don't mean snap me, I mean slap me into some reality and some self-pity I was going through years ago over a certain thing uh, in my family as well. and. Uh, this came to me and it's from the Lord and he said, self-pity destroys everything around it except itself. Yeah, it only grows. Wow. Let me say that again. Self-pity destroys everything around it except itself. I don't know about you, but if, if you've heard that for the first time right now, doesn't that just make you mad. Doesn't, I mean, nothing happens until somebody gets mad. So get mad about it and just do what Gloria did and kick off your shoes and with wild abandon, begin to worship the Lord and go for it with your faith. And Len, guess what happened to me that day and all the rest of the people in the arena? When she obeyed the Lord and broke out like that, there was a wave of deliverance from being self-focused and laying back and and what's anybody going to think if I get too wild worshiping the Lord? 
All of that broke because she obeyed the Lord. It broke off of me. I've been free every day since then. Amen. I, I'll praise the Lord anywhere. I'll dance. I'll kick my legs. I'll run. I love to praise the Lord. The freedom for that came on me the day she obeyed the Lord and it swept across the arena and everybody broke out praising God like wild. It was wonderful. And now Lynn always has to say like, if we're in a service at a church and he's ministering and I, I'm in the front row, so I don't see behind me. So I'm up praising the Lord and I think everybody's up praising the Lord. And so Lynn has to say, okay, everyone can be seated. Really, it's just me. <laughs> Everybody else had already gone to their seat or, or sat down in their, their seat or their pew. And uh, there's Kathy because she's on the front row, not aware of that, just lost in praising the Lord, you know. <laughs> And I say, okay, you may be seated. I don't care. And the understood, you said you're an English teacher. The understood there is, you may be seated, Kathy. Yes. <laughs> I could stand the whole time. It wouldn't bother me. Isn't it wonderful? And we've danced people uh, to life, literally. We've danced people in the hospital to life uh, and praised people. You just can't be ashamed of the gospel. You can't be ashamed that you're the property of Jesus, that he died for you. You can't be afraid of what other people think. The point and, and is a wild move, a breakout. It's faith. Will break you out and break other people out too. That's right. And I remember that time um, at our home church uh, years back where that precious boy in his 20s, I call him a boy, he was a man, mm -hmm. and his uh, fiance committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Uh, some kind of medication did something to her mind. And some of the medications have side effects like that, Lynn. Yeah, and that's why the word's better than medication. They were, they were going to be wed. They were going to be yes. married soon. Yes, they were engaged. And he came home and found at lunch and found she had committed suicide. And that's, that's a very difficult thing. Again, we were in a special meeting at our home church and that young man was there and it had happened recently. And he had been a very undemonstrative, uh, shy gentleman. And praise broke out. It got wild. People were running and dancing. And all of a sudden I see Len. He goes, excuse me. He goes past me, gets into the aisle. He goes down to where that young man was just standing like a stick, grabs him and made him run with him around the church praising God. That was a shock to the whole church. And you know what? That broke him out of it. You know what? I, he began to heal from that day. He did. And rapidly, I might add. It broke off of him so fast. Did you know that I was out there doing that before I even had the thought of doing it? It came up out of my spirit. You, you mean you saw yourself I doing it? I saw myself uh, out there doing it and was out doing it and didn't even realize that I had acted on that impulse <laughs> from the Holy Spirit. And then I kind of got out there and thought, okay, praise the Lord. That's how much the Lord wanted you to do it. He did, and I enjoyed doing it. But if I'd thought about myself and how yeah. I looked, he might not be free to this day. Yeah. But it was God's way of freeing him through someone encouraging him to just break out and go for it. I admire you for doing that, honey. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. that, that always helps. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, perfectionism is another problem. Uh, thinking perfectionistic thoughts. There are so many of us that don't want to step out by faith and have a hard time and fear gets on us. Just like this praise thing that you were just talking about. Had I done the analytical thing on that, I would have in, endured the paralysis of analysis. I would have started picking it all apart. I thought, well, I don't, I, that may embarrass me. I was thinking of myself, not his well-being. So uh, this, this thing of perfectionism and having to know the end result from the beginning, if you're one of these firstborn list-keeping perfectionists, you need to loosen up a little bit and just do some dancing out behind grandma's barn and uh, where nobody can see and just get used to it and uh, be free from yourself. Get over yourself. You don't have to know the end from the beginning in the natural sense. Here's where you can know the end from the beginning. 
and that's from faith's perspective. Read the Word of God. Prophetically, you know the end from the beginning. And by faith, you know the end from the beginning because of the, uh, the act of faith propelling you to the payoff of faith, bringing it from out there somewhere in the hope realm into the here and now. That's how you can know the end from the beginning. Oh, this is just, there is no beginning and no end to this whole series, so it's a lot of fun. And we want to pray with you if you don't know the joy of life himself, Jesus. We always do this. We try to do this at the end of every program. Kathy and I met the Lord by, by saying a simple word out of our mouth, a, a phrase of words out of our mouth. Lord Jesus, say this out loud with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. That's it. Say it out loud. Come into my heart. I just let the past go. I let perfectionism go. I let fear go. I let negative thoughts go. And I just praise you for coming in now and taking charge of my life. I voluntarily turn my life over to you. And I thank you. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we want to hear about it. There's a phone number and contact information on your screen. And it's so simple to get a hold of us. There'll be a prayer uh, person there on the other end to uh, be a partner with you in further prayer and ideas on how to improve your life as you walk in the Lord. We so appreciate you being with us. Thank you for following all of us on social media, following TCT and following uh, Len and Kathy Mink. That's M-I-N-K. And we're so glad you've been there. We pray for you constantly. We love you and we'll look forward to seeing you next time right here on TCT for another Lynn and Kathy program.